Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's dive into a story about a delivery driver at a pizza place who turned a simple task into a legendary act of defiance. After being caught not doing much between deliveries, the store manager ordered the driver to fold pizza boxes as a form of punishment. What could have been a mundane chore quickly escalated into an elaborate prank. But before we begin, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. You want me to fold boxes? Oh, I'll fold boxes. This is a story that happened over a decade ago. I used to be a delivery driver for a chain pizza restaurant. One of a driver's responsibilities is to fold pizza boxes. So I get back from a delivery and just sort of chill out until my next delivery. I'm not doing anything but sitting on my butt. I usually fold boxes, but I think we had enough already folded to last the night. My store manager comes into the back room and catches me not really doing anything. We get into an argument about me slacking off. We get pretty heated. I'm totally in the wrong, and I get that. But as a final F you to me, my store manager tells me to go fold boxes. You want me to fold boxes? Oh, I'll fold boxes. Outside of the restaurant, we have a metal storage container, like the ones that go on those container ships. We store all of our paper products there, like paper plates, napkins, paper cups, and boxes. Our boxes come unfolded, shrink-wrapped in packs of 50. We just got our Thursday night shipment in, and my boss went ham on the ordering. We probably had like 20 packs each of large and medium-sized boxes. The day was Thursday, and my store manager had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. He would come in on Monday night to do inventory, so I had a plan. He wants boxes. I'll give him boxes. So I get to work. After every delivery, I go straight to the shed and fold. I fold fast. Whenever the store needed boxes, I'd take a stack of folded boxes in and get right back. Other drivers would come to the storage container, but I'd tell them, I got this. One of the other drivers asked why. The store manager told me to fold boxes, so I'm folding boxes. He took a peek back in the shed and it was half full of boxes, floor to ceiling stacked and no space in between. He started laughing his butt off. So Monday rolls around and after a weekend of straight folding pizza boxes, I'm nearing the end of my task. I have so many cardboard paper cuts, but I believe it's going to be worth it. Monday's slow so I can really concentrate on my task. The storage container is completely full of boxes stacked floor to ceiling. If you wanted to get in for anything, you'd have to start taking stacks of pizza boxes out, so I moved my project inside the store. Any shelving with empty space got pizza boxes. Any empty flat surface got pizza boxes stacked to the ceiling. The shift manager thought it was hilarious, so he didn't stop me. All boxes were folded near the end of my shift, so I just sat on my butt, then I go home. While I'm chilling at home, I get a call from the store. It's the store manager. SM, did you fill the storage full of boxes? Me, yes I did. SM, why the hell did you do that? Me, you told me to fold boxes. SM, you a-hole, I have to inventory those. That fact did not occur to me until that moment. It's easy to count boxes when the majority of them are in unfolded stacks of 50. Corporate's very anal about the pizza box count in the store because one box equals one pizza. They believe if one box is missing, that means someone probably stole a pizza. If a stack of boxes are missing, then there's a lot of internal theft in the store. So my store manager has to count every single box I folded, which was well over a thousand. You might think this would be easy because you take the count of one stack and multiply it by how many stacks you think are there. Wrong, the storage shed has other things in there too, so I couldn't always do a floor to ceiling stack. Plus large and medium boxes were folded. The box stacks were stacked so tight together, you couldn't see past a row of stacks. You'd have to dig to see what was there. When I saw my store manager the next time, he said, I don't have to fold boxes anymore for the rest of my career. One upside was that nobody had to fold boxes for almost two weeks. The drivers were thankful. It's hilarious how you took his fold boxes command to the extreme and basically turned the entire storage shed into a cardboard fortress. And the fact that he had to spend hours counting every single one of those folded boxes. Classic. And our second story. Serve me and my child. I work in a healthy fast food sort of place in Australia. I only started a couple of months ago with weekend only shifts as I still go to school, so I only work a three hour shift per week. 
This place I worked at is healthy fast food, so pre-made sandwiches, salads, baguettes with salads and meats in them, paninis, coffee, and toast, I guess. I don't remember the day or why we did this, but sometime in April, Australia had some sort of special day, and my company decided to give out free Vegemite toast to anyone here. So since we live in Australia, Vegemite is a natural for us. The line was very, very long. I was constantly going to the storage room, grabbing bread and serving customers nonstop. We have two toasters that are always on for banana bread and stuff, and we have two on the side as a substitute in case one breaks or something. We have all four toasters going on at once as there were many people ordering Vegemite sandwiches. I'm doing my work and when the time came, I told my boss that my shift is over and left my coworkers to the agony of serving customers. I sit down at my work's tables because I plan to meet my friends here and then we plan to go to one of our other friends' house. I had my chicken avocado panini and my caramel milkshake. I had my chicken avocado panini and my caramel milkshake I made just as I left and sat down and was listening to music. I was waiting for the text of my friends and saw a text that said they were about 10 minutes away and went back to eating. Keep in mind that the store is still overflowing with customers. I was eating in peace while listening to my music and someone yanks my earphones out. I assume that my friends are here, but I look up to see a woman and her child. I say, what's wrong, ma'am? And she replies, do you work here? Yes, I do. Well, service, we've been waiting in line for a long time. Ma'am, my shift is over. You'll have to wait for one of my coworkers to serve you as I'm not there now. I don't care. You work here and you can see how long the line is. Get up and service. Ma'am, like I said before, my shift is over. You'll have to wait for someone else to serve you. Fine, I'm going to speak to your manager. Who's the manager here? I gestured the lady towards my boss and she spoke to him and I want to say my boss is a good person. Even though he can be a little rough and mean sometimes, he always has my back. I listen carefully and I hear him say the exact same thing I said to her earlier. I see my friends and dash towards them and ask them to leave the shop with me as I don't want to be included in this madness anymore. I come to work the next week and ask my boss what happened with that lady. He said that she threatened to sue himself and me because I wasn't doing my proper job serving customers. But apparently in the end, my boss threatened to call the cops and she just left. He apologized to me as for how I had to go through that, only being here about five shifts. I told him not to worry about it and just went on with my day. I can imagine the TV ad now. Have you been the victim of a restaurant worker not doing his proper job, whether he was clocked in or not? then you may be entitled to compensation. And our next story. You think I could have some? Or why can't you take my hair? Here's a tale of a weird encounter I had with a customer when I worked for an electronics and entertainment retailer. For this story to make sense, you need to know that my hair is naturally curly and nice, soft ringlets. I get compliments on it a lot. It's kind of annoying to care for, but I know people pay good money to have that kind of hair. I don't mind if acquaintances want to touch it as long as they ask first. It's weird when people just grab your hair. So on this day, I was dealing with some stock out on the floor. I was opening boxes of games with scissors, and they were sitting on the cart I used to price things. Cue a woman, let's call her SW for strange woman, walking up to me with a pleasant smile on her face. I was hoping for a stress-free transaction. It was not to be. SW, God, I love your hair. Me, oh, thank you. Is there anything I can help you with? SW, do you think I could have some? Me, some what? SW, some of your hair. Me, you want my hair? SW, I want to take it to my hairdresser to show them the kind of curl I want. They need to touch it. Me, um, I can't let you have my hair. You can take a picture of it if you really want to. SW. All I need is one curl. You've got plenty. At this point, she grabbed the scissors off the table. She wasn't so much threatening me with them, but I was a bit scared. Then she put them up to her own hair and cut a chunk out of it. SW. See, it's fine. Just let me have some. Me. Please give me back the scissors. You can't have any of my hair. I'd really like it if you left. SW. Fine, be a bee about it. She threw the scissors down and stormed off, leaving her hair on the cart behind her. I was very glad she left when I asked, and she never came back. I wonder if she got the hair she wanted, though. 
Offering to let her take a picture was more than gracious and should have appeased her. She was just completely unreasonable. And our last story. HOA tried to put a lien on our house. So this happened years ago when I was in elementary school. So maybe 15 years ago when I was living in Florida at the time. Anyone who lives in Florida knows how often new gated communities just pop up. So our neighborhood was established and has been before I even moved into the house. The house once belonged to my uncle. We had a neighborhood watch, but no HOA. The gated community was finally built and people were moving in. Now, we don't have a bad neighborhood, but we had some strange colored houses. Lime green and magenta with giant metal lizards hanging all over it is an example of one. Our house was simple, hand bricked and half concrete painted white. It stood out compared to some of the other houses. The new gated community is an HOA community, and they thought they ruled overall. Soon, people in our neighborhood were receiving fines for their house color choices, their unsightly cars, not approved mailboxes, and other nitpicky things. My parents received some for my dad's boat being in the driveway, and even our unruly yard. We had a bougainvillea, which grows like crazy, and we were constantly trimming it, and we even got a fine for our fence. The old fence was chain link, the new fence was a wooden privacy fence, don't ask why we had two different fences. My uncle only fenced in part of the house. It was still good fence, so my dad didn't want to rip it out. Well, my mom and dad would just pitch anything they saw coming from that gated community as they had fancy stationery. This went on for maybe four or five months. We would receive fines for not meeting HOA standards and other violations. We talked to our neighbors and they received them too. They tried to call and complain, but were given the runaround and decided to pitch the mail as well. My mom received a phone call from her bank. They started to question her about the lien on the house that just appeared in the system. My parents had less than a year left on their payments for the house. They always paid extra every month for the house loan and were always on time. My mom was super confused and said there shouldn't be a lien. We don't have a reason for there to be a lien. Turns out the gated community filed liens on almost every house in my neighborhood. My mom told the bank the situation and called a lawyer. I'm not all sure what happened, but I know a lot of the members of that HOA faced felony fraud charges, and it was just a huge mess with a pretty big lawsuit against the HOA board. We were able to pay off the house after the lawsuit. We even had a big celebration on one of the roads, a huge cookout, and we met people we didn't know before. I even made new friends with some kids that I didn't even know existed. People moved out of that gated community due to bad press, and a lot of the houses stood empty for a long time. When I moved away, there were still a lot of empty houses, and it was like a ghost town. Last I heard, the name of the community changed, and the houses were being filled up. So I guess the lesson is, leave our bright houses alone, and mind your own business. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.